Today, the conspiracy of silence will be broken. I'm going to visit Gwase, Akaiwa, the district head of Zoro community, Guma local government area of Benue State, where the conflict between the thief and the Fulanese left hundreds of people dead and vulnerable properties destroyed. <laughs> Shule yam chi sashe. Ya ya hita wam ya ya ku sashe. Ya u humba dubu. Ya u ya u jera humba dubu. I u u humba che. I humba wepe humba dubu. The Fulani Hesmen, otherwise known as the nomadic Fulanis, are persons of the Fulani tribe spread over most of the state in the northern part of Nigeria and other African countries such as Chad, Niger, Sudan, Senegal. Their main occupation is the heading of cattle from place to place all over Nigeria for grazing purposes. They are the major ingredient of this story. While the thief are local farmers among the various tribes in Benue State whose source of feeding and income is crop farming through which the Benue State is recognized as a food basket of Nigeria. The thieves are the second major ingredient of my story. Driving you down the history lane, both thief and Fulani ethnic groups had an enviable bond that made them accommodate each other for over the years. We shall the two ethnic nationalities from history have not had any friction. Frictions began to occur in 1990, but they were at minimal level of a normal Fulani grazer, a herder of cattle, we at times encroach on the farms of a tea person and cause damage and such as settled even among themselves. But as society became more dynamic and complex, these frictions made them a force to a larger conflagration. Most particular, they have taken the political and religious dimension with the quest for territorial expansionism and inbred tendency of obliterating another group from the Earth's surface to assume control and ownership of territories that we are never ransacked or ravaged by any other person except the people that happen to be there by creation. And we are living here, it's not that we didn't like our, our house. We have, we have relationship with Fulani, but I don't, I don't know the actual problem that we have problem with Fulani. You understand? We are living here with our parents. Then I'm inside farm with my friends. Then I saw Fulani is destroying my farm. Then I asked Fulani that what happened that he, I'm here with my people, I'm farming that what happened that he destroyed my farm. Flani starting shouting at me. Then I come house, I tell my father that what happened to me in the farm. 
Then my father followed me with my uncle. Then Flanny started having problems with my uncle. They destroy our farm. Then we as a thief in a farm, be our things that we are doing, you understand? Then as we started having problems with the, the Flanny, then they are fighting with us because of they are destroying our farm. We too, they are fighting, we are fighting with them because they are killing us. As we said, as we say that they will not dest destroy our farm, then too they are killing us. They came around 5.30 in the morning and start shooting. It's, it's from there they kill about four, four people here that day. In fact, the impact is devastating. Before 2011, my people had a wonderful settlement and they were really enjoying themselves and are big time farmers. Majority of people here are peasant farmers and most of their lives they have lived as farmers. And in fact, most of them had built a lot of, had a lot of buildings in their communities and they were living decent lives until 2011 when the flowing hills when invaded the place. And this area in particular is part of my constituency. About November 2011, the invasion took place and there were a lot of destruction, a lot of killings that went on for three good years. But unfortunately for us in the community who were affected, the government has not even come to help them. If you go into the hinterland of this community, you discover that they are living like refugees in their homelands. Benue State is full basket of the nation. But because of the invasion of the Florinese, I don't think it is no longer the food basket of the nation because the thieves cannot even farm now. If you go to the farm, you are either killed or you are, whatever you do is destroyed by the Florinese, by the cattlemen. Uh, the level of damages quantify or change into monetary value, it will amount to over a hundred billion. Because houses were destroyed, farm, farm crops, people were killed, and if the country is talking about agricultural produce, it has been seized for a very long time. And uh, now that these damages have been done, it's not a one-day damage, it's continuously up to this time because the people that were producing all these crops are no more doing it. Because of the fear that the Fulanese or the crisis have instilled in them. Constructively, I would say that it's the Fulanese encounter with the lush, green vegetation along the coast of the Benue, inhabited by their thief counterparts, was stirred competition which degenerated into deadly conflicts. <laughs> I strive to leverage forward, looking efforts in community leaders through targeted interactions and conflict striking areas in order to build their capacity to own and address human rights issues while simultaneously driving relevant regional actors into actions. From the inception of the crisis to date, I have been providing uh, materials anytime I have uh, uh, something to spare. Uh, the reason is that when uh, this crisis started, I wish you were around to see the level at which human beings are subjected to. People will trek over 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, running from the crisis. Some of them will arrive in Makode half naked, or oh, some communities at the outskirts of Makode half naked, without food or anything. And at that time, there was a lot of inflow of uh, uh, materials, foodstuff, clothing, and so on, as relief materials. But as far as I'm concerned and as far as I absorbed uh, from the same community, uh, those uh, items were not reaching and those affected. Thief farmers frowned to the Fulani herdsmen grazing and occupation of their farmlands. They react and the Fulani attacks the farmers' dispersed settlement, 
killing mostly children and women in cold blood with the employ of guerrilla warfare using machineries. Well, Goma is, was, was one of the main local governments that were affected by the crisis. But all the local governments that border uh, with Nasarawa and Taraba were badly affected. But because of the location of Guma, uh, Guma is the route where most of these Fulanis come into Benue. And they feel that the grass we have is very good for their livestock. And so in the last three years, we have seen them flooding, not the normal Fulanis that we, we used to have in the years gone by. So they simply flooded the whole area. And as such, you go around from your dear to you come right down uh, to the last belt we have uh, in Makudi local government. They've taken over that land completely. They've displaced the chiefs. Their wives are not there. Their children are not there. All the schools are closed down. There are no clinics. It is a place where we have a lot of snakes. Most of the people that are bitten by snake die because we don't have hospitals there to treat. Even basic, you know, AIDS. Uh, that, that is normally to be given, you don't have. It was the turn of the Inzora district on the 3rd of May 2013. The Fulanese flock Goma local government feeding on grasses, crop plantations and economic trees of the tea farmers. In addition to that, through continuous movement of the farmlands, the cattle pound and compress the soil, making it difficult to till with holes. This aggrieves the tea farmers. We call the security agents the police and the vigilante. When they go to their settlement, they will drive them away. They will threaten them. At long last, our people came into meeting that they don't want the flannies. The flannies will go because there is no area for them to graze. Thereafter, the flannies reorganize that they are coming to, wander, to destroy our crops, our houses are then settled here in order to allow them to grace this area. We heard some rumors that these people are coming today. But God's so kind, we don't know. At times we hear rumors, our people will hear rumors, but we won't see them. So we sat quietly, they brought food for us to eat. Before we could eat, we heard a gunshot. And then, in no time, there was a sporadic random shooting everywhere. So we all ran. Then these people engulfed the whole of the village and then settled here. This was in, in May 2013. They started burning village down to Bajimba with series of efforts to the government we could not find any solution. I have valid evidence that both parties have lost countless lives as well as properties, comfort, farming opportunities. The people of Guma, Way West, Agatu and Makrodi local government areas of Benue State are the most vulnerable as they have fixed settlements. Uh, such a timber clamp and Joe Okahanko Aganaha, Kasuak, a Yalan Shai, Ado on a Yalaga. Such a Yanizua Kakati Vate. Now he gain a car, I Yanid do with me, Guayamba Yanid do with me, a ten la clambaga. You buy Yana Yatan and Harigon. Hingan Kapuga say a carway. Can I own by Moncha or Van Kasuapa, Kaveban? Monk 
But we are meant to hold it in tune. But she is poor. I can't move. Go, 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 go. Here we are. We are going to be doing. Somebody is going to be doing. Somebody is going to be doing. Somebody is going to be doing. It's difficult. My people are dying in droves. Dying in droves as a result of ailments that would have ordinarily gotten treatment. And the population is fast depleting because diseases have set in. These are shells of expelled uh, ammunition. As you can see, this is a wreckage of a tractor. And one of the Fadamas. These are bodies of persons. Bodies of persons that are mutilated with cutlasses. All these bodies were got decomposed. This is a head facility that was destroyed and some properties vandalized all. You can see wreckages of tractors, you see motorcycle. Here is a heap of rice that was awaiting uh, bag, uh, bagging. As you can see them, these are yams, yam tubers in heaps all over the land. And this is a very terrifying picture. A three-year-old boy was shot with an automatic regulating uh, firearm from the head and the bullet came out through the genital side. You can see this picture. These are matchet cuts. Matchet cuts. This one slaughtered like a ram. You can see them. See, here's a picture of a woman, Maggie, slaughtered. This is where they fire at her, cut the one of the legs, and then finally she gave up. At the time of the crisis, I went to inspect and see. Um, you can see me with my handset taking a, a, a photograph of a murdered subject of my domain. All these pictures are there, you can see them. We hold the Nigeria government accountable since it is enacted in Section 14, Subsection 2B of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Though every Nigerian citizen has a fundamental right under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Constitution to move freely and reside anywhere in Nigeria, such movement and residence must be in observance of the relevant laws, such as the laws regarding trespass, land ownership and mischief. Telling <laughs> I say, talk on the sea, me, me, we had the Nanga Mina Cosso, he mutual piano, look at Chan Pishi, the Kangasago, who do two, who want him girl, me, me, who want him to Benanguga, Benamo, and Luga, and I see him in the Cosso. Somebody didn't have a yaya, Quayano Yana ya, but dancing, you will see to our members here, by and by, younger telling the poem to me, Chicha cheese, look at Jens, look Yana ya, a petan, but Zayo. 
What these people need most is security. Up to now, they are insecure. There are still some elements of high elements of insecurity. There are points where government should drop a, a contingent of army or police, mobile policemen. Uh, to guide and protect them until things uh, settle down. You will discover that most of those affected their villages, even though they are very close to Makodi, have no form of road network at all. There are no roads. And so, even if they, they manage to farm, they cannot even sell some of their produce because of no road network. And we suggest that uh, the federal government and the state government in conjunction should create a, a, a army barrack in between we are living at the boundary. From here to Nasarawa, it's not even far. We are at the boundary and every crisis starts from us. In fact, this is about four or fifth time of burning our houses. Goma is essentially an agrarian local government. We produce most of the food, rice, maize, corn, and whatnot. And now that we're not producing, we really don't know what will happen next year. Because Benue State is going to have a lot of problem in terms of food shortage. Uh, you know, we even have a serious social problem now as a result of this you know, concentration of youth who do not have anything to do. And the government can do good by trying to maybe make provisions for these people. At least compensate them. There should be compensation because the government is supposed to protect them. They didn't protect them. The government should compensate these people. They should create an enabled environment for them to do their farm, farming, go back to what they used to do best. The high rate of unemployment is still affecting our people. If you go out in town, you see small, small children selling uh, pure water, such as water, which they call pure water. Be these are children from the village. And that has also increased the rate of robbery in the town. And if you go out, people that are doing Okadana are people from the village. And the high rate of accident has been recorded because they have never been in town. They don't know their rights. They not, don't know when to overtake or when to negotiate a roundabout. And if the government wants to come out with uh, maybe a policy or any way that to give these people soft landing, people are ready to go back. This is the 21st century. Now what happens is that people who have cows put them in ranches. I think that is the best way of solving this problem because if there are ranches that are established, these people will have their cows there, our farm will be very different. So there will be uh, no issue of coming to grazing one's farm, thereby causing a lot of havoc, that would be eliminated. So ranches, I think, is the best. Trying to map out uh, areas where uh, these people will be grazing within the thief community, you know, people who are farming and cows. It's not common to live, without, uh, live together without problems. There are claims that grazing roads and rearing grounds were carved right from Senegal through Nigeria to Sudan. However, the government policy containing the carved roots or grounds has not been buried before, at least to guide farmers observe the carved areas. A bill for a law to guide grazing and allied matters in Nigeria has already undergone first reading, and I advocate an accelerated hearing in view of the increasing clashes between the Fulani headsmen and farmers in Nigeria as a whole. The affected farmers must, in a matter of urgency, be rehabilitated to enable them resume farming to reduce hunger and poverty, which is currently ravaging them.
Boaca, um mal em Zuli, e aí, a água, chuco, paca, olha bem. Anga, para ver que Maia, cabe, e aí, tu, e aí, o tu, e aí, a água, e aí, sure. Cape do Gala. I need my people to go back to their various places. I need their children to go back to school. I need them to have health care facilities. I need them to be fed. And so, wherever the funds are coming from, the funds will be judiciously used. What we want is a woman must be revived. The new political administration has made several promises to provide security, and the chief people are excited that the end to the conflict may be near.